Hello everyone, Code Theorem here. Welcome to another episode of Java 2D Game Development as we continue working on our uh, memory match game. In this episode, we're going to make it to where when you select two tiles of the same color, you gain a point and they disappear. How are we going to do this? Um, there's a lot of ways again to do this. In fact, in programming, it's hard to say that there's anything that there's really only one way to do it. In fact, it might be impossible to find anything in which there is only one logical way uh, to do something. It's always up to the programmer. Sure, there's the best way sometimes. There's the most effective, most efficient way. Um, but there's always different ways. I'm going to show you the way that I think is probably the easiest to understand and it's fairly efficient at the same time. Our first step, now let's just think this through real quick. Let's think the logic through. When you're programming, the main idea is thinking about the logic. The logic of the memory match game when you select two tiles of the same face color is one will be showing, you select another, and you get a point and they disappear, and somewhere you're supposed to be able to see how many points you have, right? Okay. So where are we keeping track of these points is one thing we need to ask ourselves. Another thing we need to ask ourselves is how do we display these points? And the third thing we need to ask ourselves is how are we going to check if they're the same color? Now, we've already done the third step. We're already, if we go down here, we're already checking if the selected tile and the new tile are not the same, and selected tile does not equal null, and then we're checking if they have the same face color. If they have the same face color, then we know they're the same kind of tile and we can remove them. They've made a match. Correct? Okay. Um, so, first thing then, was how do we keep track of these points? Well, an easy way is private int points. We set it to zero to begin, and there you go. Now they have a points tracker. And now another thing we need to keep track of though is where to show these points. So I say we do it in the title. We're going to make this, by the way, a private final string uh, of string hmm whatever private final string um, title equals this there we go we're just gonna set it to title like that alright so what we're going to do is we're going to change the title to represent how many points you have and we're going to do this uh, we're going to make a new method inside of this. It's going to be called a private void add point. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to do point um, or points plus equals one. What this does is it takes the current value of points and it adds another. It adds one to it. And actually, a better way of doing it um, is points plus 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 when you do this in front of a numerical integer value it just automatically adds one to its value just adds one no you don't have to define it it just adds one okay points plus plus that means add one to its value and now uh, set title and set it to title uh, and we'll concatenate um, the a number of points separated by a hyphen from the title and then say points. So say we had 20 points right now, okay? It would read memory match 20 points. It'd look like this right down here. It would look like that in the title, okay? Because we're doing the title, which is saved as a string of memory match. We're adding a space hyphen space, adding in the points, space points, okay? So that's what it's going to look like. Now down here, all we got to do is add point. And then, um, do you guys remember, we're going to the content pane and we're adding these tiles. So we can go get content pane. And now, here's what we're doing here. 
We've already added the point, we've changed the title, now we need to actually remove these two tiles. So get content pane, and what you do is you actually remove them from wherever they're being held. So you do get content pane um, dot remove, and you put in the component. So we'll put in selected tile, and then get content pane dot remove tile. Next up, we want to make sure selected tile returns to null so that we can continue on with this. So we'll put selected tile equals null. Oh, look at that. It's there anyway. Oh, well. Selected tile now equals null. And um, we don't have to change tile to equal null because null or er, tile is just in this method. It's a parameter. It's going to be changed next time something's clicked. So now if we press save and we run this and let's click these, they're going to disappear. None of them are the same color. But if we say go to um, here let's in, and let's just change again the green tile to a yellow tile as we did before. Now we click yellow tile, click again. It gives us one point. It says points, but oh well and now there is one problem and that is that these two are still here and they don't do anything um, and this can be fixed in one method call all you do is invalidate Oop. yeah it's like this right not giving me yeah okay invalidate what that should do if I remember correctly is it'll reset everything so we click this hmm. Huh, did not did not invalidate. Oh, maybe it has to be our content pane. Get content pane that invalidate. That should probably end up working now. So now we click. Hmm, still not. All right, we'll leave that for the next episode because. In the case that those two easier steps weren't working, it's going to be a little bit more difficult than I had thought. But I do know how to do it. We'll make it ne uh, in the next episode. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have learned a little bit about the logic. Hope you remember plus plus. It adds. Also, we could, I want to show you this real quick. We could also subtract one automatically by using minus minus. It does the same thing. Plus plus. All right, and we're going to, and we'll keep it that way. We can work on that in the next episode as well. Next episode, we'll just be cleaning up the game a little bit, making some minor adjustments, and then the game will be complete. I know it's not the best memory match game ever. In fact, it doesn't even show you the tiles right now. Um, but we're not going to get into timers and threading or anything like that in this series. The reason for that is because I'd like to start on more advanced series in game making. Um, this was more of an introductory course kind of tutorial series. Um, stay tuned, we're going to be making more games like platformer games, uh, sh target shooting games, uh, tic-tac-toe, those kinds of things as time goes on. Alright, thank you guys for watching. This has been Code Theorem, showing you guys a little bit more about Java 2D game development and making a memory match game, and I will catch you guys later.